yeah, thanks for having me, everyone. Great to uh, see you virtually this evening. So I'm just going to give you a brief overview of the uh, solicitor's qualifying exam, uh, hopefully answer a few questions that you've had. And then after uh, Rebecca's spoken about what Barbara has to offer, we can do a Q&A as well. So I'll be around to answer any uh, questions you might have after that. Um, but just to start with the basics then, and apologies if this is repeating uh, any information that you might have heard already, but just to make sure that we're all uh, on the same page and up to speed. Uh, the SQE is a new uh, series of assessments that is going to replace the LPC as the sort of final exam based uh, stage of assessment that you need to pass to become a solicitor. Uh, you might have seen um, the news last week that it's just been approved by the Legal Services Board, which is the super regulator that oversees the whole legal profession. It regulates the, the Solicitors Regulation Authority and, and the Bar Regulator as well. So it's definitely going ahead in September 2021. There's no longer any doubt about that. And then you can see on the slide, I've just listed the uh, four requirements that the Solicitors Regulation Authority has provided. Uh, these are the four things you need now to become a solicitor. So you need a university degree in any subject or equivalent, so it don't, doesn't have to be a law degree. Uh, you must pass the SRA's character and suitability test, which is exactly the same as one of the requirements of the old system or the current system. And then you must obviously pass the SQE, more on, more on which in a couple of minutes. And importantly, you must complete two years qualifying work experience. Uh, which is also uh, extremely similar sounding to the current uh, system of, of the two year training contract, but there are some key differences that I'll, I'll go into in a moment. Uh, just to cover first though, the transitional arrangements for those of you who have, who have started a law degree or a GDL or even the LPC uh, by, by September 2021, if you're planning to, to start one that's coming up. Um, there are big transitional arrangements available so that the current route, so the LPC route, is going to remain open for a number of years. Technically, the LPC is going to remain valid until 2032, uh, but the, the real cutoff point might be earlier than 2032, uh, just because uh, it kind of depends on the, the, the whims of the market, essentially. If law firms switch over to SQE en masse over the next couple of years, um, that means that the demand for the LPC will go down. So uh, if that happens um, really quickly, uh, law schools may stop providing the LPC before 2032. For anyone who has an LPC, uh, you'll still be able to apply for a training contract in, in the traditional way and you won't be discriminated against on that. Uh, so that's, that's the transitional arrangements. Now just a brief overview of what the exams involve. So uh, the SQE is divided into two uh, stages, two distinct uh, assessments, SQE1 and SQE2, they're excitingly named. So uh, SQE1 is kind of more academic, it tests your knowledge of the law, uh, but a, a slightly different to a law degree, it, the assessment itself is all about how you would apply your, not, your legal knowledge in real life working situations as a solicitor. So it's called uh, functioning legal knowledge, you know, the practical application of legal knowledge. Uh, so that consists of 280 multiple choice uh, question exams. Uh, so lots of emphasis on the multiple choice there. There's been some concern about whether the multiple choice aspect um, could affect the quality of the assessment, may, could make it less rigorous than the current route. But uh, the SRA and, and all the academics who have designed the exams have rebutted that, for example, the Qualifying Lawyers Transfer Scheme, which is a well-regarded scheme for all international overseas non-UK lawyers to qualify in the UK, that uses multiple choice exams and that's seen as very rigorous. Um, exam one, you can see the, the list of uh, subjects there and, and the list of subjects in exam two, but you can see it covers different uh, practice areas and it's all about the sort of the academic um, knowledge based principles of the law so it in in that sense it kind of covers the same syllabus as a law degree or, or GDL although there are you know some key differences between the SQE and, and, and those qualifications. Uh, SQE 2 
uh, by contrast, is more about the practical skills. So it's uh, all about the actual skills that you'll be using day to day as a solicitor, such as advocacy, client interviewing, you know, uh, drafting contracts and so on, drafting letters of, of, of written advice, uh, et cetera, et cetera, all the, all the big practical skills. So we've, uh, you know, you that division between SQE 1 and 2 of, of the kind of knowledge based in SQE 1 and the, the practical legal skills in SQE 2 has drawn comparisons uh, with the division between a law degree and the LPC. But there is a big difference is in that the uh, remember that the LPC, which tests similar practical skills to this to, to SQE 2, but the LPC is actually uh, set at testing you at uh, trainee solicitor level. Uh, whereas the SQE is set at testing you at newly qualified solicitor level. So it's supposed to be a fairly significant step up from uh, the LPC in terms of the level you'll be at when you uh, pass it. You'll, you'll be an, an, an NQ and ready to go. So that's something to bear in mind. And then, of course, we've got the other crucial component of becoming a solicitor under the new system, the qualifying work experience. Uh, the two year requirement you, you'll probably be very familiar with because uh, that's that's present under the current LPC system. Uh, you need to complete a two year training contract or other recognized work experience as part of your qualifying as a solicitor. Uh, but there are some big differences with the SQE's uh, rules on work experience. So as you can see on the slide here, uh, unlike the old training contract, the, the, the SQE's work experience can be completed in up to four separate placements, and these can be completed at any time. So uh, that's before SQE1, uh, after SQE1, before SQE2, and after SQE2. It's super flexible about when the two-year total is actually reached. Um, and of course, that means that the, the four separate placements have become much more flexible in what they um, allow as well. So uh, volunteering in a law clinic or a, a branch of citizens advice, uh, doing some pro bono work with your university's law society, uh, paralegal work and so on. All these things can count towards uh, the qualifying work experience that, that you need to become a solicitor. So in theory, that kind of eliminates the need for the two year training contract and it puts the power in your hands as a, as a trainee or qualifying solicitor because you can kind of accumulate the work experience to qualify without getting permission from a law firm that, that gives you a training contract. Uh, but of course, there's a bit of concern around that that the, it, doesn't, it still doesn't oblige a, a law firm to give you a, uh, a, an NQ vacancy role just because you might have accrued 24 months worth of work experience at different placements. The law firm or, or other organization employer will be well within its rights to still say, well, that training isn't entirely relevant to our organization. So we still want you to complete the, the two years training with us. Uh, but that's not such a huge deal if you're being offered a, a training contract or, or other kind of paid training role with the firm, of course, because you've, you'll, you'll have a job with the firm and will be well, be on, will be well on the path to, to qualifying as a solicitor. So for that reason, uh, the traditional two year training contract is going to remain uh, fairly popular. Uh, the timing of it might change slightly. The firms will make slight alterations to their training programs as they have a lot more flexibility to do that now. But uh, broadly, you know, if you're if you want to join one of the big law firms, perhaps one of the regional firms or a national firm or even an international city firm, uh, you can probably expect to have to complete a kind of two year uh, training period with them or similar or a similar length of time, uh, just because they're preparing you to work at their organization um, and, and, and to service specific client needs, its sector focuses and so on, which might not be covered in a, if you're working in a commercial firm that might not have been covered by volunteering or, or paralegal work in a family law firm, for example. And we're also seeing new part-time training contracts emerge as well. So there's you know, more flexibility emerging, but broadly that, that two year training contract that we're familiar with now, that's still gonna be around for a long time to come. Uh, then we've got to cover the cost of the SQE, which is obviously one of the, the real key points here. So remember first that the SQE is not a course. So unlike the uh, GDL or the LPC or a law degree, it doesn't involve any tuition, teaching, learning materials or anything like that. It's just an exam. 
uh, and, and your preparation for that exam and your ability to pass it will be, be determined by the choices you make in terms of whether you feel you need to take a course or not to prepare for it. But this cost here of three thousand to four and a half thousand pounds, this is just to take the exam itself. Uh, so no, no mean sum to sit an assessment, but you can see the breakdown there with SQE1, which is basically written exams, multiple choice exams. That's the, the less expensive one. And then SQE2, because it's a little bit like the LPC and it's testing practical skills. So it has uh, oral exams and things like that, things that are more expensive to uh, for, for um, assessors to, to put on. You can see it's more expensive there and reflected in that. Um, but that, of course, doesn't include the cost of any SQE preparation course uh, that you do. Um, and you can see I've mentioned sponsorship opportunities at the bottom of the slide there. We always recommend under the current system that, uh, if possible, try and apply for a training contract and secure your LPC sponsorship from your law firm before you take the LPC. That isn't universal. Lots of people take the LPC every year without a training contract lined up first and still go on to secure a TC during their studies. But obviously, the, the most financially safe and, and um, fruitful option for a student is to get the to get the sponsorship first. So we always recommend that as the first port of call. Um, don't want to tread too much on Rebecca's toes here because she's going to be telling us more about uh, what Barbary has to offer in terms of the SQE prep courses, but just to cover the basics. Um, it's not actually compulsory to do an SQE prep course in order to sit the SQE assessments. Uh, you can turn up with no preparation at all and sit the SQE assessments if you like provided that you can pay the fees to take the exam. However, the question would then be, will you have the, the, the knowledge and, and the kind of exam know-how to pass without having done any prep? So that's where they've got you. And obviously many students will quite sensibly feel that they'll need to do some kind of preparation course to, uh, before they take that risk of, of you know, a 4,000 pound exam. Um, so uh, BPP's research we can see there, um, you know, a majority of law firms uh, seem to expect uh, trainees, if their future trainees, to undertake, undertake some kind of training uh, during that, what would traditionally be the LPC year or two years. Uh, they're not expecting people to turn up, take the SQE, and then start at, at those firms without any training. So you're going to see continuing tie-ups between uh, law schools and specific law firms that design prep courses that are not only uh, designed to pass the SQE, but also like some LPC courses now are designed to uh, prepare uh, those candidates for life at a particular firm, perhaps covering particular practice area electives and, and areas of law and so on. Um, so there are lots of SQE uh, preparation course providers developing their own courses. Barbary is one of them, but there are many more. You can see a few examples on the slide there, but there are others as well, like Nottingham Law School and all the big law schools at the big northern universities will be getting involved in this, I would imagine. Um, and a key thing that we don't know about the uh, many of the uh, SQE prep courses is that uh, they haven't revealed what fees they're going to be charging, all except, as Rebecca will soon be telling us, Barbary. So uh, I've just included Barbary's costs there. They might have been slightly updated, so I'll leave that to Rebecca to update us. But um, as you can see, um, basically the University of Law, BPP, and all these big providers, they still haven't come out and said what their fees are, but Barbary has released what its fees will be for its prep courses, and they are significantly, significantly cheaper than any of the old LPC courses at any university you could attend in the UK. Um, and that really is kind of setting down a competitive marker for the other providers. Uh, we can, um, I saw the University of Law saying that they're going to release information about what their fees are going to be for their SQE prep courses next month, so November. So we'll see what they have to say. And, and the question is, are those providers now going to try and match Barbary to compete with them on price? Or are they going to charge more than what Barbary does? Uh, but Barbary's really set a marker there. You know, when we're, we're used to seeing fees of £15,000 or more for the LPC, uh, two and a half to three thousand pounds for for an SQE course is is no uh, tiny sum of money by any means, but it is a significant significant reduction on the cost of postgrad training uh, at the moment. So, 
in, in, in terms of the finances, perhaps that, that could be good news for, um, for students. Uh, but the junior lawyers division, and I've nearly done, but just to raise a concern about the finances, the, the JLD uh, uh, have long opposed the SQE on, on various grounds, including diversity. Um, they're worried that uh, because the SQE prep courses are going to be kind of professional, um, uh, professional sort of vocational courses, they won't qualify for uh, the, post, the government's postgraduate student loan. Now that isn't necessarily the case, perhaps law schools and Barbary and, and, and others are, are working to design courses that will be eligible for the postgrad loan, but that's kind of a thing that's up in the air. That might impact diversity by uh, uh, limiting those who can take the SQE to those who can either take out a £3,000 loan elsewhere or who have £3,000 uh, ready to, to lay down on a course, which um, obviously will exclude a lot of people. And, 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 and fair enough. So that's an overview. Um, I'll stop sharing my screen now and hand over to Rebecca, and then um, I'll stick around and answer any questions people might have. Thank you for that, Josh. Um, Ty, I don't know if you want to share your screen. Yeah, um, that's fine. I'll just yeah, pop the okay. uh, PowerPoint up for you. Um, I don't know if you can, can you see it? Yeah, yeah perfect. perfect. Um, so, hi everybody, I'm Rebecca, the brand ambassador here at Cardiff for Barbary. Um, and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about the SQE prep courses that Barbary have launched um, a few weeks ago now. Um, so if you're not aware, Barbary is a leading educational institute and they have offices all over. They're most well known for their bar prep courses and helping UK um, law students qualify as a US attorney. Um, but recently they've um, decided to offer the SQE prep courses um, and their main offices or schools are in London um, for this SQE. So how can Barbary help? Uh, Barbary have over 50 years worth of experience in helping law students on their career journeys. Um, Barbary, Barbary's SQE study plans then are designed for law students, non-law students, graduate lawyers, qualified abroad and candidates with other full-time or part-time commitments. And the key features include a personalized study plan, um, an intuitive study assistant coach, otherwise known as the Isaac engine, which basically customizes your study plan for you. Um, you can have a one-to-one -one personal mentor, which is normally a solicitor that's qualified in England and Wales. Um, and you can ask them any questions throughout the week. Um, or weeks leading up to the SQE exam. Um, there's top uh, law tutors and lecturers, um, which is another real big benefit for if you're preparing for the SQE exams. Um, so there's a multiple choice exam expertise, which is really helpful for preparing for SQE1, which Josh has already said is a multiple choice exam question format. There's hard copy research books and um, a touch point workshop. So if you're struggling on something in preparing for the SQE, you can attend certain workshops and improve your skills. Um, so we offer a lot of different courses here at Barbary um, and a lot of different um, enrollment methods. So in preparation for sitting SQE one, um, you can enroll on a 40 week um, course, which is a commitment of around 10 to 12 hours a week. And that is best for non-law students and anyone in full-time employment or foreign qualified lawyers. Um, or you can offer a 20 week course. Um, this is best for law students from a UK university who have um, finished their degree or graduated around three years or more um, ago. Um, or you can opt for a 10 week course, which is probably most relevant for um, law students on this call. Um, that's around 35 hours a week commitment and it's designed for recent law graduates um, or graduates from a UK university. Um, so yeah, that's probably most relevant. And then lastly then, fees and enrolment. Um, the SQE1 prep courses at Barbary, as Josh has already said, they cost just under £3,000. The amount on the screen now is what the initial SQE exam would cost. So um, it would cost that much and then £3,000 on top would be for um, the Barbary prep course in preparing you to sit that exam. Um, 
there are instalment options available. You don't have to pay the whole lump sum there and then. You can pay throughout the year. Um, and there are scholarships available to cover um, the cost of the Barbary SQE prep course. Um, if you visit the Barbary SQE website, there are more options on there. Um, and it tells you a little bit more about the scholarships and bursaries available and how you would go about applying for them. Um, they're currently offering a offer up until the 30th of November. And um, that's an early bird discount for enrollment on January 2021, 40-week um, SQE prep course. And that's around £450 off. So if you are thinking about completing the SQE next year, it's definitely worth looking into and seeing if you can get any discounted price. Um, but I know £3,000 seems like a lot of money, but when comparing it to the LPC, it's significantly cheaper. And um, Barbary's definitely um, done a really good job in making it really accessible for law students, law graduates, and anybody else thinking about um, qualifying as a sister in England and Wales through the SQE route. Um, so lastly then, you can follow Barbary um, if this is something you're interested in on our social media accounts, they're on the screen now. Um, my Barbary Cardiff Instagram account is the main one that I post on, but I know um, the, other, the other social media accounts are updated regularly as well. You can also visit the um, Barbary website. Um, so yeah, that's everything from me for now, if you want to go to the Q&A. Right, perfect. Thank you very much to both Josh and Rebecca. Um, so now uh, we will move on to the Q&A portion of this event. Uh, we have some questions that have been submitted in, so I will just pull those up and start to go through those. If anybody does have any questions, then please feel free to pop them in the chat function and I will find them and definitely make sure that they get asked for you. Right. Um, so a question for um, Rebecca, um, is, the SQE, is the SQE at Barbary completely online or does it have an on-campus presence? Yeah, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, you can decide, you can opt to do a fully online prep course, which is the same, um, you'll get the same benefits as you would if you were doing an in-person one, um, or you can opt to do an in-person one, which would just be based at the London School, London Barbary School. Um, so yeah, there's options to do both online, um, in person, and it's really up to you and it really doesn't disadvantage you if you opt to do an online course. Um, and both options are really flexible. Perfect, thank you. Um, now, a big question for you, Josh, one that's kind of, um, I think one that I've kind of been wondering myself is, so for people like myself in second years or people especially like in first year that have just started their law degree, the fact that under the new SQE you don't need a law degree, how does that kind of, like how would you say the tone is kind of set for that, like for the future of the law degree and its relevance in actually becoming a solicitor? Sure, um, I think the law degree is, is going to remain um, high, a highly relevant qualification, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. You still need an undergraduate degree uh, in any subject under the new rules. Um, it's fair to say that the, that a law degree is, is obviously particularly well, well suited to it. Um, and also, you know, that kind of can, can demonstrate the kind of commitment and, and interest in uh, the career path and the legal profession that, that employers are looking for. So there's that angle as well. Um, you know, you, you don't need a law degree to qualify under the, under the current system either, you know, so there's that uh, debate over the, the difference in value between the GDL and a traditional law degree. I think the, the honest answer is that in, in the eyes of recruiters in terms of qualifying as a solicitor, there isn't much difference between the GDL and a law degree, but a law degree is a highly rigorous and respected qualification in its own right. Uh, it's easily as respectable as, as most other uh, academic degree subjects. It opens up a wide range of career options other than uh, qualifying as a solicitor or barrister. Um, and it's a, a, a clear marker of proven academic and intellectual ability. So I think it's gonna remain hugely relevant. 
uh, especially uh, you know on the uh, in the more academic and specialist areas of the profession as well for sure particularly areas of the bar as well perfect thank you um this another question that we had in which i think you've um, pretty much touched on um in that was about um the gdl and about conversion courses and whether that kind of how they will look and whether they will still hold relevance and weight so i think you pretty much answered that question there um well, yeah, just, uh, just to add to that very briefly, Tariq. Um, yeah, I think that the GDL is going to remain um, relevant. Um, also bear in mind that the GDL is going to remain in its current form available as well, because it's still compulsory for aspiring barristers who didn't complete an undergraduate law degree. So, so the GDL is going to be around for there as well. Um, yeah, it's still going to retain its relevance on the solicitor route as well, but I would fully expect um, and, and we are seeing the development of um, slightly modified GDL courses that combine exactly the same syllabus of learning, but perhaps with, with a slightly different emphasis as well, or an additional uh, module for SQE1, uh, preparing people for those practical multiple choice uh, based questions. Perfect, great, thank you very much. Um, a question that came in for you, Rebecca, um, does Barbary offer um, anything for people that want to pursue the bar as well as people that are interested in the SQE? Yeah, so I'm going to be running a presentation um, on the 27th of November um, in collaboration with a, a few trainee solicitors who have qualified um, in New York or undertaken the New York or California bar. Um, so basically, Barbary are most well known for offering their bar prep course. So it's basically designed um, for US and UK law students looking to um expand into more than one jurisdiction and um qualify as a us attorney so they offer that as well as the sqe prep courses lovely thank you um another one rebecca uh, what's the best way to keep updated with things that's going on or anything that um might be going on at barbary that you share or promote yourself yeah so the best way to keep in contact with or like with me or what's going on um, with Barbary is to follow my Barbary Cardiff Instagram account um, and on there then you can uh, see regular updates about what's going on. Um, also in my Barbary Cardiff Instagram account bio there's a small form if you could fill that out um, you can register to receive regular updates and stuff through an email um, so if you prefer to do that rather than check an Instagram for updates that's also an option um, but obviously you can Go on the Barbary website as well and keep up to date through that way. Um, I think they have a Facebook account as well, but I'm not responsible for posting on that. Um, so Instagram, I would say, is the easiest way. Lovely. Thank you very much. Right. There's a few questions that have come in, so I'll uh, start going through those. Um, so one question, uh, Josh, if you were able to kind of reiterate, um, somebody missed um, what the SQE2 exam consisted of. Would you be able to just quickly run over that portion of the exam again yeah sure um i think the exact format of the exam hasn't quite been revealed by the sra yet but sqe2 covers practical legal skills like contract drafting uh, writing letters of advice advocacy negotiation and so on and as a result it will definitely involve a mix of written exams and uh, practical oral exams i.e you uh, taking on a role and, and acting out a, a, a legal uh, problem seen as, in the role of a solicitor with uh, perhaps an actor or you know an examiner playing playing a client and so on stuff like that hope that helps lovely thank you um josh another question for you uh, can you complete the sqe exams in the same year do you know yeah, I believe so. Um, there are going to be multiple sitting uh, dates across the year for both the SQE1 and the SQE2 exams. So in theory, yeah, the, the timing of the exams would enable you to do that. Uh, the, the question would be, um, have, would you be able to accumulate enough prep and, and knowledge and skill uh, to, to pass them in that kind of intense way? But I mean, there are so many different SQE prep courses uh, being developed. Um, some for people at different stages of their legal knowledge development as well. So um, could could well see, and I'm pretty sure there are being uh, being developed some kind of fast track options for people who are basically almost ready to go. 
Um, so I, I believe so. Yeah, that, that will be will be an option. Perfect. Thank you. Um, another question we've had in is, is there going to be a course for the SQE2? So I think that's kind of touching on the idea of whether there, whether it's a taught um, kind of exam or whether it is just purely exam based. Yeah, sure. So the, the SQE2 itself is just an exam, but there are SQE2 uh, prep training courses in development, including uh, with Barbary, as, as Rebecca explained. Um, some universities, we still haven't had all the details from many of these universities about what the SQE courses are going to be, and that's more the case with SQE2. I think we know a lot more about their SQE1 courses at the moment than we do about SQE2. Um, so more information to come out about SQE2 courses, but yes, look, essentially you can take the SQE2 without doing a course, but there are courses going to be available uh, that would probably be sensible to, it would be sensible to take one uh, in order to maximise your chances of passing. Yeah, I agree. Right, perfect. Thank you. Um, one other question that we've had in. Um, so will first years have to take the existing LPC or the SQE or what, what um, options? I believe as it stands at the moment, they'll almost certainly have a choice. I've seen that the University of Law have committed to teaching the LPC well into 2022. I wouldn't be surprised if that was extended to 2023 and beyond as well. But again, as I mentioned in, in my uh, little talk, um, that's kind of down to what the, the law firm market does and how quickly it adopts SQE. But I think for people who are in their first year in 2020 to 21, it's likely that you'll actually have a choice between doing the traditional LPC route and the SQE route. And there are pros and cons to both. Uh, the, for example, a con of the traditional route is the cost, uh, but a con of the SQE route is that it's brand new um, and at the moment untested. Perfect, thank you. Um, so another question for yourself, Josh. Um, so if you've completed the LPC um, and in the next and in the next few years it became invalid, would you have to do both of the SQE assessments to become a qualified solicitor? The, S, uh, the LPC is going to remain valid until 2032. So if you've already completed it, um, you definitely shouldn't be looking at doing the, the, the SQE. If you have an LPC, you should be trying to get yourself a training contract and a solicitor role. Um, and I would suggest that if you were unfortunately unable to secure a training contract by 2032 with your LPC, um, doing the SQE in that situation might not help you, to be honest. It, it might be something to do with, with your overall qualifications and, and um, a career of a solicitor might not be for that person at that point. I, I wouldn't say that, oh, just because the LPC is kind of slowly on its way out, now's the time to switch up and do a completely different assessment because that will change uh, everything. Um, if you're not getting a training contract and you're an LPC graduate, um, don't do the SQE. Keep applying for a training contract and hopefully it will come good. Perfect, thank you. Um, Rebecca, a question for you. Uh, would you just be able to quickly go over um, how much the prices for the SQE1 and SQE2 course preps were? Yeah, so um, SQE1 and SQE2, they're the same prices and they are 2999, so just under £3,000 um, each. So if you did SQE1 prep course, that would cost you just under £3,000. And then if you wanted to enroll to do the SQE2 prep course, which you could only do if you pass the SQE1, that would cost you just under £3,000. Lovely, thanks. Rebecca. Sorry, if I could just add in there, you know, a good way, Rebecca's absolutely right. And a good way to think about it is uh, combining that with the cost of the exams itself. So if you combine that, that £3,000 each for SQE1 and SQE2, that's obviously 6,000 plus about 4,000 for the SQE uh, assessments you're looking at an overall cost of £10,000 to, to qualify. That's kind of a, a good figure to be bearing in mind. Yeah. Um, and even then, it's still a lot yeah. cheaper than the LPC. Mm -hmm. um, perfect, thank you both. Um, so another question uh, for you, Josh. Uh, so this is from a first year student. Um, so they've said, uh, if I choose to take the route of the SQE, could I start working towards my two years 
um, like worth of qualifying work experience now? Um, perhaps you could, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure if that would count because the SQE itself hasn't come in, uh, whether retrospective counting of work experience will apply, but I can't think of a particular reason why it wouldn't. And anyway, I, although I don't have a definitive answer to that particular question, apologies, it is worth reiterating that um, accumulating legal work experience now and in the future is an extremely wise and sensible thing to be doing uh, if you want to become a, a solicitor. So um, even if it didn't count, that would be a great a great thing to add to your CV and would hugely improve your chances of qualifying as a solicitor. But I'll, I'll need to look into that with the SRA with, with regards to whether um, work experience ac accumulated before 2021 would count. But I, as long as it meets their requirements, which it always must, um, I don't see why it wouldn't at the moment, but I can't definitively answer that, sorry. Okay, right, thank you very much. Um, and just for anybody that kind of wanted to go off and uh, Look, find that information or find kind of the, the requirements of what constitutes qualifying work experience. Is there kind of any guidelines published online where you might be able to find that information? Yeah, uh, the SRA website will have a, a, a lot of information about the different types of qualifying work experience. Uh, it can be quite inaccessible. A good place to go would actually be the Law Society's website. They've produced a guide for qualifying solicitors to, to the SQE, um, lots of detail there. And uh, I wouldn't be earning my paycheck if I didn't give a shout out to my own website, Law Careers Net as well. Uh, we've got lots of information on, on the, uh, all aspects of the SQE. Uh, we're reporting it in a, in a timely fashion. So all that info is accurate as well. Um, so yeah, lots of resources for you to use. Perfect, thank you. I think there's only one or two more questions. So we are coming to the end of this. Um, so one question was, uh, so what would you say or what advice would you give to some, um, re to recent graduates that have kind of finished their undergrad law degrees now and they're contemplating whether to do the LPC or the SQE and they're kind of sat in this um, kind of awkward phase now deciding what to do. Is there any advice that you might give them? Yeah, sure. I mean. Hard to give uh, advice to apply to absolutely everyone. There's no one answer that, that people should be doing, but it's all going to depend on the, on the circumstances of the individual. But yes, certainly the, those people uh, have a, a tougher choice than, than would normally face students uh, about their next step. Um, your main choice is to continue down the current route, which is proven um, and uh, has a good reputation with law firms or to wait for the new route, which is whether anyone likes it or not, is, is going to be the route for the foreseeable future, um, perhaps forever. Um, there's uh, a lot to think about there. We've got some uh, information on that on Law Careers Net as well, some, some of the, the some guidance on the different issues you should be thinking about. Uh, finances are obviously one and your access to postgraduate student loans, you know, you could think about combining a master's, for example, with, with the current route, uh, either, do to, either to do the GDL or add it to your L LPC as well, which means that it's eligible for the postgraduate student loan. That could be one of the kind of faster, more direct ways to qualifying as a solicitor. Um, there's definitely a lot to be said for kind of n not being a guinea pig in the, in the first wave of SQE people. However, um, the SQE is much, much more flexible and would seem to be much, much cheaper as well in its own right. So I wouldn't say either is the wrong answer. Um, and just further, further to that, and, and generally not generally looking at the SQE itself, you know, um, people who have graduated now, um, if you can accumulate any kind of uh, legal experience, obviously we're in a pandemic and, and all the kinds of usual work experience are completely out the window, but uh, pro bono services and citizens advice and so on are providing virtual online services. I believe that some of them are offering volunteering opportunities and stuff like that. And of course, all the law firms and other legal employers are offering all kinds of virtual work experience and engagement opportunities to, to come and, and sort of interact remotely, uh, take those opportunities uh, and chat to the law firms and, and the employers that interest you as well about what they what they're thinking about the SQE and 
and um, you know if they have a particular view of it because if you have a particular interest in a in a in an employer that you really want to work for it's well worth talking to them about what you should do next um what would be best suited to, to joining that particular employer yes thank you josh i think that's a really good point actually about kind of looking at what your what your particular firm that you're interested in is has has views about the lpc in comparison to the sqe when it comes to applying for for, for either or um right i think this is the last question that we've got um if i have missed one um that anybody uh please still post it again in the chat if i have missed one but i think the last one we've got on here um is the sqe two course go um the same length in terms of kind of uh, weeks and hours dedicated per week as the SQE1. Um, I don't know if we have any guidance on that yet. Uh, I'll leave Rebecca to provide details on Barbary because she's much more familiar with it than, than me, but just in general terms from what we're seeing from the law schools and other universities, I think we're seeing a whole range of different timings and options being provided for both the SQE1 and 2. Uh, they can be sat very intensively in a shorter period of time, or they can be spread out to accommodate, uh, for example, work or caring commitments. Um, so uh, I don't, I'm not sure if there's a huge difference between um, the, the length of, of each of one compared to the other, whether it's one, one is much longer than the other. I would say that that may differ from university to university. Yeah, with um, regards to Barbary then, um, you can enrol on um, a 20 week course, a 40 week course or a 10 week course. Um, and it's, like Josh said, it just depends on how quickly you want to sit the exam. And if you think you need more time, then the longer course at Barbary is, is probably a better option for you. Um, and that's for SQE1. And I would assume that's the same for SQE2. Um, I haven't been told otherwise. So I think these course options at Barbary are the same for both. Um, okay, another question that's just come in. Um, so, will you be able to do the SQE course with a, with your university institution going forward? Okay, so um, just to reiterate, it's very important to be aware that the SQE itself is not a course; it is an exam. Um, and to sit the exam, you'll be sitting that externally. You won't be sitting that at your university institution. In fact, you'll very likely be sitting it uh, through the Pearson National Test Program. If anyone's gone and done their driving theory test, uh, those are the guys that are going to be handling the actual sitting of the exams. Um, but, uh, you know, depending on where you study, yeah, your university may provide an SQE prep course, but that is a different thing to the SQE itself. Perfect. Thank you very much for clarifying that, Josh. 